Good afternoon and welcome to our organizational meeting for the Board of Education for the next term and also for our first regularly scheduled meeting of the Board of Education. Uh, as a first reminder to everyone, if everybody could turn off their cell phones, that would be appreciated. And secondly, if you'd stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance to start the meeting. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of, of the United, United States, States of America, America and, and to the, the republic, republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. And with that, Mr. Secretary, we will call the roll. Gladly. President Wasserman. Here. Vice President Baker. Here. Secretary Kaminsky, <coughs> myself here. Treasurer Brandstant. Here. Member Gordon. Here. Member McFarland. Here. And Member Singer. Here. Seven seven. Thank you. And this is our organizational meeting, so you see we went to a lot of organizational stuff. After the organizational meeting uh, component is done, we will move into a regularly scheduled Bo uh, board meeting, but we will not redo the roll and we will not redo the Pledge of Allegiance. We'll just continue on without a break. Okay, so with that, we'll move into the uh, first item. I think I'm going to hand this to Mike for information on the legal status. Or you want me to handle that? You can handle okay. Sure um, <laughs> for information on the revised school code, the district's legal status was defined as General Powers District effective July 1st of 1996. Just to set level set who we are and what we are. And our official name is Midland Public Schools. Uh, we have a the first item of uh, on the agenda then for decision is on officers for next year. If you recall, we had a nominating committee of Lynn, Angela, and myself to bring forward a slate. Uh, that slate has been uh, is in the agenda. The slate proposed is myself as president, Angela as vice president, secretary as Yvonne, and treasurer as John Kaminsky. So that slate is there. In addition, procedurally, as I outlined last year. Uh, anybody that would care to make alternating nominations for any of these positions may do so now. Do I hear any alternative nominations? Seeing none, I will seek a nomination for the <coughs> slate. I have to ask for nomination of the slate. I'll move to nominate the slate as written. Support. Moved by Member McFarland, support by current Secretary Kaminsky for the, for the <coughs> new slate. And I think we can do this by voice vote. All in favor of the current slate that's proposed say aye. 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 Opposed? I hear no opposition. The slate passes. Thank you very much. Now we'll move on to appointments for the study committee, etc. cetera. Um, as per our How Midland Public Schools Works, this is the prerogative of the president. However, as has been my past practice, I involved the nominating committee to do so and also listen to your wishes that you submitted prior. And you will see uh, folks listed there. The Curriculum and Instruction Assessment Committee will be chaired by Lynn, uh, joined by Scott and Pam. The Administrative Services Committee will be chaired by Yvonne, uh, joined by John and, and Pam. Human Resources Committee will be chaired by Scott and joined by Lynn and Yvonne. And the Finance Facilities and Operations, or more affectionately known as FFO, will be chaired by John, our new treasurer, and will um, be joined by uh, Vice President, new Vice President Branstad and President Wasserman. Um, we have to, I'll read all of these and we'll go through then and ask for a vote on all of them. Um, but I do have a procedural question. Do we need to change chairs? I guess we don't. I would I'll just, I'll just, this uh, meeting. I will just uh, call you as your new names and positions as we go forward. Uh, Advisory Council for Adult Education uh, will be Pam, the Midland County Educational Services Agency, ESA, Board of Education Special Ed Advisory Council. Mr. Paris, is he in the room? I didn't see him today. Uh, liaison persons between the board and the following continuing committees and organizations will be held. The Advisory Board on Instruction. Did I miss Gerstacker? Yep. Oh, mm -hmm. the Gerstacker Proficiency Awards, thank you, will be Yvonne this year. And this will be her first experience at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, it's one of the more gratifying things we get mm -hmm. to do, so congratulations. Uh, the Advisory Board on Instruction and Sex Education and Birth Control will be Lynn. The Midland County ESA Liaison will be Yvonne. The Midland County Partnerships for Education will be, uh, will be Angela. The MASB Legislative Liaison will be myself. The liaison person between the board and the strategic planning and district school improvement committees will be Pam. 
And Pam, this assignment's made because this is a great way to learn what's going on in a little more detail in each building of the district Very as good. you go around. So it's a learning experience for you also. Uh, the Midland County School Board Association will be myself. Uh, the Health Wellness Committee will be Scott. And the Distinguished Service Awards Committee will be Lynn. So that's where we'll go. And at this point, I need to have a motion on 4.1 and 4.2. I move we accept items 4.1 and 4.2. Support. 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 We have a nomination by Vice President Brandt, Stat, and Secretary Gordon. Do I have that right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Um, listed is um, the schedule for meetings for next year and typically we would make a comment or two about that but at this point I would like to turn it over to Mike for a little uh, dialogue and then discussion before we move into a vote of accepting this proposed schedule. Um, the agenda group and I have had a discussion for a little while on the necessity to have two board meetings each month and so um, you know we believe we can conduct all of our businesses with this schedule, there are some months where we would still need two. There are some months where we believe we can go to one, and that would reduce the amount of uh, resources that you're expending bo both administratively and assistance um, in preparing for two board meetings a month and not duplicate that work as you go forward. So we're proposing you adopt that schedule. And I'll add to that, um, in all the training we go to, most people do not meet that frequently. Uh, most meet monthly or a little almost like we do secondly if issues do arise we always have the right to call special meeting with 48 hours notice like we have done here in the recent past and then and then lastly if we truly are a governing board and not supposed to be involved in the day-to-day -day, it really doesn't seem consistent to meet every two weeks if you're really direction setting and, and oversight so that, that's my view, and I, I fully support this. But I'd like to open up the dialogue <coughs> about how it looks, the philosophy of it, or are there different dates that ought to be changed, or something along that line. When I first saw the uh, proposal, I thought I, I wanted to make sure that we were doing what was right for the community and the kids. And I looked over the minutes of the past year just to see, can we really fit this all in? And it, it looks completely doable. And then um, I also looked a little bit at another district um, in Colorado. Uh, it's Cherry Creek. They've got 51,000 students. And I noticed they have uh, their board also set up to meet in the same schedule that you're proposing. So I think it's a great idea. <clears throat> the only thing that I would suggest is in August, we have uh, August 11th as a recommended meeting, and uh, I would suggest moving that to the 25th just so um, people who are on vacations, it's closer to the school year, maybe it'd be easier for the vacation schedule, but I would support this either way. With, with that, rather than proposing as a motion right now, I'd turn to our, our staff to ask why the choice of 11th versus the 25th. And, uh, and if the 25th works fine, then we can move that into a motion or a, an amendment. I, I, I would say briefly that, and, and I explained one uh, to Pam, that we were kind of just trying to stay in uniformity as well as when we had one meeting a month. It was at the beginning of the month, not the second meeting of the month. I don't know if uh, Bob, Gary, or Linda would want to add anything to that. Uh, August 11th we have a lot of hires that we do during the summer now we have the authority to go ahead and start those teachers through um, your approval um, and then bring it to the board afterwards sometimes it's a matter of um, it's real busy time in, in uh, human resources but we can adjust I guess my only concern would be then we'd have two meetings like really close together yeah the intention correct. is you don't need that yeah, 25th to the 8th, but the only thing that would occur may be some additional uh, last minute hiring that would occur. So that is something to be concerned about as well. Yeah, just because now you have too big of a gap in one and, you know. Too short on the too other. Too short on the other, and given that you're only doing one. 
The, the question I had is that in the, the months that you're going to have two meetings, what's the rationale? Is it around budget, special workshops? Yes, and things? There, was, there was definitely reasons why, and I'm going to refer again to Linda, Bob, and, and Gary who've been here through a full schedule, and I have not yet. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, for the remaining year, we had already scheduled the budget adjustments for that second meeting in March. And rather than going back to all the staff and asking them to be ready at a different time, we thought we would keep it. But knowing that we could do something different for next year, you'll see the second meeting in March is eliminated. Uh, the two meetings in April, one is just the budget workshop, as it is this year. Uh, and the two meetings in June, because of the requirement to have the budget, have a budget hearing, and then act on it at a separate time, it wasn't feasible to move budget prep back a month we just don't have enough information to do it. So that's why the, the two sure. meetings in June. Okay. 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 With, with the, any more comment on that <coughs> August meeting? If, and if so, if not, um, Pam, if you still would like to change that based on dialogue, I'll let you offer an amendment, and then we can vote on the amendment, and then we can vote on the motion. Uh, I'm completely happy if we want to stick with the 11th and feel like that's more of a balanced schedule, then that makes okay. sense. Okay. And we will not amend it. And at that point, I will. <coughs> any other discussion then to make sure I don't cut it off too fast? With that, I'll accept a motion for accepting 5.1. So moved. Moved uh, to accept agenda item 5.1. Moved by Treasurer Kaminsky. Support. Oh, multiple supports. <laughs> I'll give it to Vice President Brandt. <laughs> um, with that, uh, we'll take a voice vote. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it unanimously, and thank you for the new schedule. Good idea. No sense doing extra work for our staff that has plenty to do uh, than entertain us. Okay, we will move on to appointees and designations. Uh, these, at, after we read these off, um, I think we'll do them all in mass and uh, accept the motion in mass, and I'll just read them all off and then do a, a, a total motion. The first uh, item is appointment of the board's education legal counsel, the firms of Posnick, Dyer, Kanar, and Garshaw, LaPointe and Butler, Seacrest and Wardow, and the Troon Law Firm designated as the board's legal counsels. In addition, the superintendent is authorized to retain specialized legal counsel through other firms as appropriate. And it's a uh, recommended board approved legal representation as outlined through next the end of this year. Fiscal designations and authorizations. It's recommended the board designate the Chemical Bank and Trust Company and other public depositories qualified in accordance with MCL 380.1221, the Revised School Code of Michigan, as approved depositories of school district funds through December 31st of 2014. And the treasurer of the Board of Education is the legal financial officer for the school district and as such is authorized to sign checks for the middle public schools. But the superintendent, assistant superintendent, associate superintendent for finance are the only members of the staff authorized to sign checks for middle and public schools. It is recommended that the board approve this authorization through the end of this year for these three members of the staff. <coughs> and lastly, on 6.3, the board in previous years has authorized the superintendent or his designee to sign any legal documents relating to personnel actions, which the board has approved. This authorization has been made at the organization meeting for the entire year rather than granting the authorization of each board meeting. So it's again recommended the board continue <coughs> this authorization through December 31st of 2014 to the superintendent or his designee. It is further recommended that the board delegate authority to accept resignations and retirements to the superintendent of schools or his designee through December 31st of 2014. Resignations and retirements will be reported, however, in subsequent meeting agendas. With that, uh, I'll accept a motion for 6.1, 6.2, and 6.3. I move we accept item 6.1 through 6.3. Moved by Ms. Branstad. Support? Support. Tie again. <laughs> Support for Pam. <laughs> <laughs> she tied the last time. Yeah. Any other discussion about those three items? Pretty straightforward as traditionally. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. We now move into uh, Board of Education matters, and we have I turn it over to Linda Klein for uh, 7.1. Yes, and I'm, I'm trying to do a little research here while we were talking because I have uh, reason to believe that there may be a change to 7.1, uh, which is a reaffirmation that under Public Act 152 of 2011, which limits our uh, expenditures for medical benefit plans, 
Uh, I believe that there was <coughs> a revision to this at the end of the year that would change one of the numbers. Uh, but if you'll remember back in 2011, this public act prohibited us from paying more than either a hard cap or 80 percent. And the default is the hard cap, but uh, despite the fact that we've done that, our legal counsel has recommended that we reaffirm that decision each year, which is what we were doing. Uh, in any event, it's really a moot point for us because of the way that we've structured our employee contributions. We actually contribute less than the hard cap, so we don't have to worry about that. Uh, but the hard cap was originally set with uh, a multiplier built in, and so the original numbers that we were told for 2014 would be that the total cost <coughs> for single coverage couldn't exceed 5,857.58. For single, 11,715 and 17 cents, and for family coverage, 15,975 and 23 cents. Now we don't have to deal with that on an individual basis. We just have to look at the aggregate of what our plan pays. But we look at all of our single coverage, multiply it times that amount, all of our uh, employee plus one coverage times the second amount and then the third for the family coverage. And in aggregate, we can't pay over that amount. And we don't have to worry about that. Uh, I believe that at the very, very end of December, it was passed Public Act 270 of 2013. And it's so recent, it's not showing up on the legislative site yet, uh, that would address concerns that a number of districts had about the employee plus one. There was a lot of question about is that employee plus spouse, or if it's employee plus a child, is that considered a family rate? Uh, apparently, that caused a lot of concern with uh, the way a number of districts were insured. It was never an issue for us. Uh, interestingly, the number was always pretty well aligned with what our own illustrated rate was for that amount. Uh, However, that did amend that second amount and increased it. So I believe that for 2014, the hard cap for an individual plus one, could be spouse or could be dependent, will actually be $12,250. So we would just like your action on reaffirming <coughs> that it is our intent to comply with the hard cap and not the 80-20 requirement of the law. And you see no issues with complying with that hard cap? No. Okay. I'll entertain a motion. I move we accept 7.1, 7.2. .2. Moved by Vaughn and looking for support. Support. Support by Lynn. Yeah, just to clarify, it's item 7.1? 7.1. Okay. Yep. She said 7.2. Oh, we I, haven't discussed it. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm not, sorry. I'm oh, you said 7.1. Seven, seven I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> It was moved for seven. Officially, the record show was moved by for 7.1 <laughs> by Yvonne. Sorry. Any questions or discussions? Even though we don't know what the numbers actually are, Linda, it does, it's not going to have any. No, effect. we already have our illustrative rates for 2014. <coughs> we get that when we renew our stop loss insurance. And our own illustrated rates are below these numbers. OK. And then our employees pay a percent of their compensation rather than a, a fixed amount. So we know we're well under the hard caps. OK. Any others? See none, moving to vote. All in favor of 7.1 say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. And we'll move on to 7.2, and I'll turn it over to Mike. It's been past practice, and it is our recommendation to have the administrative assistant to the superintendent continue working with the secretary on school board or school elections. I'll accept a motion first. I move that we accept item 7.2. Moved by Angela and support by? Support. Support by Yvonne. <laughs> now we'll open it for discussion. And, and contrary to all good practice, I'm going to comment first. Um, I don't think we should vote for this. This one was way overworked already. <laughs> <laughs> no, in, in all seriousness, uh, Cindy, thank you for your service and how you deal with the board and the superintendent. Thank you. Now I'll open up the rest of the discussion. Seeing none, we'll move into vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. I was outvoted. <laughs> I think that brings us to a conclusion of our organizational meeting. Is that correct, Mike? 
Anything it, else? It does, and we're moving so quickly that when we get into the uh, regular meeting, our superstar or our shining star employees may not be here yet. <laughs> I said 20 minutes. <coughs> yeah. I, <laughs> and I wasn't used to um, the practice where you continue the meeting right on. Yeah, and, yeah uh, that's and fine. The other. So I, I, I misspoke when I told them. Uh, what time did I tell them to be here? 4.40, so. Okay. <coughs> And well, I tell you, come back to him. Do Chris? Can we just move it? Yeah. Consent agenda. Well, we may be able to do some of the school board recognition piece and all that, and still make it on time. So I would suggest you keep moving, but just realize we may delay on the shining star and bring that into a different part of the. When we get to that, if they're not here, we'll just do a motion to suspend that until they do come. Then we'll enter it back in when they get here. Yes. Okay, that's fine. Okay, <coughs> at this point we'll move directly into our regularly scheduled board meeting. That was the organization meeting for our youngsters in the, in the crowd. Um, we will not go through roll call. We'll use the roll call from the other meeting to suffice for this meeting. Uh, we'll move into the first item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Um, oh, there it is, never mind. And you can see them outlined here. It's the minutes from the last meeting, uh, staff measure resignations, um, Exception in the 90 mile rule that is outlined in for student trips and how business schools work for a few field trips. We've done that in the past. Administration is seeking approval to deliver purchase order at Trivalent Group of Mount Pleasant for $11,850. And it's the low bidder for MPS Netgear equipment bid for, for routers, etc. The, the district has joined other districts in a lawsuit in the state of Michigan seeking full funding for newly required program services since the people of Michigan adopted the Headley Amendment in 78. Um, each participating district pays a prorated share of the legal costs for based on Durand 1 judgment amounts. The Millen Public Schools payments for legal services totaled 41991 as of July 1st, 2013. <coughs> the board is authorized a combined expense limit of 42000 based on action taken on October 9th, August 13th of 2001, November 25th of 2002, July 12th of 2004, July 11th, 2005, ad nauseum every year we've throwing a little more money into the pot here to try to recover some money from the state. Based on continuing legal action, administration recommends the authorization for an additional $4,000 for the coming year. Um, let's see, the other items, uh, approval of the payments for the school's bills for November as outlined in your agenda. And then uh, we'll approve over for legal bills that are outstanding of $4,588. <coughs> I'll accept a motion in a second, then we'll move into discussion if there is any. I move we accept consent agenda items 1.1 through 1.6. Moved by Ms. Branstad. Any support? Support. Support by mm -hmm. Yvonne. Uh, now we'll open up any discussion. Scott, you seem to have a discussion. Yes. Uh, for 1.5, um, we're out of this lawsuit, correct? Does anybody have an answer to that? We're, in other words, we're no longer actively involved in this lawsuit. We've received our settlement and, and are now moving on. W where are we in there, the scheme of this? Well, there's a long history of it. It started in 2000. There mm -hmm. were some settlements in the original <coughs> one, but it's continuing over um, um, unfunded mandates. Is that, is that what you would call it? And Linda will probably give you a deeper and explanation than that. And additions to the lawsuit, but most recently, uh, the districts have actually prevailed in the contention that we are owed money. And most recently, there's been extended wrangling over how to determine what that amount of money is. So we feel like since the decision has been that, yes, there is money owed to the districts, it would be foolish to pull out at this point and, and give up whatever that might be. But there's. The, the state does not part with its money easily. So, so there's it's no contention that we are owed money? We just don't know how to calculate how much it is? Is that, that yes. where we're at? That, that's where okay. we are. Mm -hmm. And will it probably be? More than $4,000? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, what's spent is some. So it's good. are you going to get more and more for staying in the game is what right. it amounts yeah. to. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Uh, so now we'll vote on the consent agenda. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Now we'll move into Board of Ed. Uh, request to address the board. Does anyone it, in the audience? Jared, uh, just as a procedural matter, did we 
We didn't do 1.6, did we? I did it as part of the yeah, we did. consent. Oh, you did? Okay. I, th yes. I thought you said yeah. the, yeah. 1.5. Yep. I apologize. Yeah, 1.6. Yep. Okay. Although there's two 1.5. Yeah, actually. there's two. There's a double <laughs> up on numbers. but <laughs> So 1.6 was included in the consent. Okay. Um, at this point, we'll open it up to people who would like to address the board. Young folks? Oh. Seeing none, we'll move on to Board of Education matters. And uh, we'll go to 3.1 first and give it to Mike. As you know, January is School Board Recognition <coughs> Month. And um, we, our staff and our students have done a number of things to recognize all the service that you have given throughout the, uh, the year and what school boards do. And the first one um, I'd like to point out to you is a book that you have in front of you. And these books uh, will go to the school buildings and to their media center. But each of them are uh, personalized for you. So this one's Scott's, and, and it'll be in his honor and go into the media centers. And Scott wants to take home and read it to his sons first tonight. So right. he's going to do so on that. So very good book. Um, Cindy did a great job picking that one out um, for, for the media centers. The, se the second one you get to take home and keep, and it is a, a book that has been illustrated by a fifth grade class in partnering with a first grade classroom um, in doing so. So we'd like to thank uh, Mrs. Prout's classroom and Ms. Hardcastle's classroom for uh, developing this book for you on uh, school boards and what these kindergartners think a school board does or does not do. So if you want to take a second, so we've got plenty of time here. We're <laughs> I love the first one. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> Who's illustrated, though? That's the question. Oh, jeez. There's got to be something in here about school lunches, right? That's great. <laughs> well, it's got each one of you in there, and, and they've uh, illustrated a picture of e each of you, so, oh, as well. This is, this is great. This is fantastic. Thank you, Pam. Thank you. It's very nice. Yep. So they did a great job in, uh, in doing so. And we have one last piece we would like to show you. Um, and I, I'm going to let it kind of speak for itself, but we, maybe we should give it a brief introduction, Cindy, um, based on the commercial. Is it insurance? Yeah, the Geico commercial. The Geico commercial oh, where the, where the, the gentleman's hand. always sitting with um, young children and, with, and he has questions and how they, oh, yes, they respond yes, yes. honestly. Here's our version of that for oh, you. Oh, no. <coughs> Where did you get shoes that f has your name on? Did you find them in the got shoes and then his mom wrote this. Oh, his mom wrote his name on it. You didn't find a shoe that had your name on it. No. You found shoes that fit you and your mom wrote your name on it. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Did your mom write your name on your shoes? Yes. Yeah? yeah? <laughs> I see it. I see it. Oh, I do see it. Yeah. Right on it. It says Lambert. Yes, that's my last name. It's your last name. Yeah. That's well, the last name you're ever going to have? Yeah. Well, boys and girls, it's nice to have you here. I'm, I'm glad that I get a chance to talk with you. I've got some questions to ask you. Do you think you're, you you're going to be able to give me some answers? Yeah. You think so? Yeah. All right, here's my question. What do you know about the word education? What do you think education is? Yes. When you go on vacation, okay. So if I want to get an education, where could I go then? To the airport. To the airport. Okay, that sounds good. Well, boys and girls, this is your first time in school, right? You're in kindergarten? Uh -huh. Are you liking school? What's your yeah. favorite part of school? Yes. Recess. Recess. What's your favorite part? Recess. Recess. What's your favorite part? Recess. Recess. What's your favorite part? Uh, 
about learning. About what? Learning. About learning. Okay, very good. So I've got three people whose favorite part of school is recess, and I only have one student that likes to learn. What do you like to learn about? Okay, you like to learn numbers and you like to learn reading. How many of you like to read? You like to read? What do you read? You read words? I, I read easy books. You have to read words? You have to read words? Yes. Okay. I have to read easy books first and then I read hard books. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to ask you about a couple of words. I'm going to ask you about a couple of words and I want you to tell me what you think about them. Okay? The first word is bored. What do you think the word bored means? Yes. When you have like nothing to do. When you have nothing to do. What do you think? Like when you uh, just sit around and do nothing. Sit around and do nothing. What do you think? Like right now. Uh, like watch TV. You sit around and watch TV. What do you think bored means? Bunch of toys and you don't want to play with them. Oh, a bunch of toys and you don't want to play with anything. Okay. My second word is education. And you said you said learning, right? And education, you can go to school to get an education. It's where you learn. Now I'm going to put those two words together. What do you think board of education means? What do you think? You're bored of school. Well, did you know that the school that we go to has a board of education? And what that means, it's, their, it's uh, a bunch of people that work together to help make rules for all the schools and the teachers. What do you think about that? These are people that come together that help make rules for schools and teachers. Would you like to be on the Board of Education? Yes. yes. You would? Yes. You would. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want to be on the Board of Education? Because I think it would be boring. You think it would be boring. What about you, Bradson? Why would you like to be on the Board of Education? Because I want to help make rules for the school and teachers. Oh, wow. If you could make one rule for a school, what would you make? What rule would it be? Listen to the teacher. Oh, that's a good one. Listen to the teacher. If you could make a rule for the school, what would you make? No yelling in the lunchroom. No yelling in the lunchroom. It's really noisy in there. It's noisy. If you could make a rule for the school, what would you make? Um, no yelling in the classroom. No yelling in the classroom. If you could make a rule for the schools, what would you make? Be quiet in the hallway. Be quiet in the hallway. Do you think the Board of Education, the people that make the rules for schools and teachers, do you think they get paid a lot of money for this? Yes. Yeah. How much do you think that job would pay? How much do you think they should get paid for helping to make the school rules and the teacher rules? What do you think? $159. $159. Wow. What do you think? Ten bucks. Ten bucks. Just a, is that a flat rate, or do you do ten bucks every week, or ten bucks a year? How much? Ten bucks a year. Ten bucks a year. All right. How much do you think they should get paid? One hundred fifty-five. One hundred fifty-five dollars. Now you said one hundred fifty-nine dollars. That's very close. How much would you? How much do you think they should get paid? One hundred and two. One hundred and two dollars. That's a lot of money. Now, you said 10 bucks. Is that a lot of money? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. I'm stuck. I don't know what other question to ask. Do you have a question? Go ahead. Uh, what's, what is a, is a gazillion a real word? A gazillion? Is it a real word? Well, you said it, so it must be a word, right? Gazillion? Yeah. 
You said it, so it must be a word. It's not a real dollar amount. We just use that word to mean a lot of money, a gazillion dollars. We're going to wrap things up here. So I want to say, boys and girls, thank you very much for sharing your information with me. I thank you for all your answers. Is there anything else that you want to say about the Board of Education? No. No. You want to say something? I'm just going to get out here and go back to the classroom. Okay, wave bye-bye. Let's go. Bye-bye. That was, that was great. Yeah, the kids involved that always make it better, right? So oh, yeah. <laughs> now, I thought they were going to want us to change some rules. Like, yeah, I was looking for recess. Climb some snow hills. Or <laughs> it's a great example. You never know what kids are going to say. <laughs> I was thinking lunches were going to be in there or something. Right. About. They want pizza like every right. day for lunch or something. Yeah. French fries. Candy. <laughs> 10 bucks, right? You, you yeah. have to clarify it. Right? Oh, I'm going to accept a motion for the 10 bucks, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you got it. I think we have. Uh, one of our super star shining star employees here, um, and we're waiting on the other. Would you like to be the one? Or are you? Well, um, let me look ahead a second. Well, Mr. Why don't we do here, so Paul can't be too far behind? Well, I'll take a quick motion to move uh, 3.2 <coughs> behind 3.3. We'll just do 3.3 <coughs> first. Uh, can I accept the motion to move 3.2 behind 3.3 so in the agenda? Moved by support. Scott, support by John. Mm -hmm. All in favor say aye. 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 So opposed? The ayes have it. Just let the record show we move that in the agenda. The, um, the one thing, can I, can I, I'm yeah. sorry. I did. But when, when the kids were talking about the 10 bucks and all that is the, uh, I think it, you know, anytime we get Christmas cards, anytime we see the student work and things, this is our <coughs> paycheck. Yes. This, this really is, is, is really neat and thank you. It's very. Uh, these are the types of things that I keep and look at and uh, will remember forever. So it's it's really neat uh, to see that, and to see them do well, grow up and graduate yep. and everything. It really is neat. Yep. It's it's a labor of love, not of anything else. It's not a it's not the ten it's bucks. Not a political job. It's, it's not, not the ten not bucks. The ten bucks. It's not, <laughs> <laughs> it's not the plaque. It, it's them that were on the screen that it's all about. Um, so okay, so I'll move to three point three, and this will require a vote when we're done. Um, this is a superintendent evaluation for for last year. But I'll remind our public that Mike did not join us till July 1st. Um, and while the state requires us to uh, highlight student achievement in a superintendent's evaluation, it's kind of hard to do when the student achievement was measured for a year he wasn't here after he, and measured after he got here. Obviously, next year we will fully evaluate that. Uh, but the, the board, I think, concurs on what I'm about to read, and they will signify that with a vote when we're done. So if everybody will bear with me, I'd like to read uh, to you what we think of Mike's performance in his first uh, six months or so with us. So dear Mike, in late 2012, the Board of Education chose to conduct a performance review of the superintendent in December of 2012. As the state of Michigan requires, we do so before April each school year. We feel the staying on that timing cycle for superintendent performance evaluation makes sense as it assures the very board which directed the superintendent's goals for the prior year is also the board which evaluates that performance as the board terms now begin January 1st of each year. <coughs> as such, the board in December evaluated your performance, albeit over a short, peri short period of the six months since you joined us in July of 2013. We judge your performance against the broad parameters we directed you to achieve in the first six months of your tenure. Number one, become very familiar in a short period of time with our district, our students, our parents, and our teachers, our community, and its people. A, we ask you to visit each school, attend school events, and attend community events. B, proactively reach out to parents and teachers and other employee groups. And C, proactively meet and begin communications with community leaders such as ESA and other county districts major employers, foundations, local governments, chamber of commerce, civic groups, etc. Number two, 
to establish early and frequent communication mechanisms for the district to ensure the entire district is well informed of the achievement highlights, district priorities and issues. And number three, begin formulation of future millage renewal election needs and approaches, especially concerning the countywide enhancement millage in collaboration with the ESA and other county districts. First and foremost, however, we'd like to comment on student achievement under your tenure. Obviously, you were not with us during the last academic year of 2012 and 13. This makes assessing your performance in this regard a rather moot point, as you had no bearing on our student achievement, good or bad, for last school year. Therefore, even though state law requires us to assess such performance in a superintendent review, it makes absolutely no sense in this case due to the fact that you started with us after the last academic year's end. That said, academic achievement will be considered in review in 2014 after you've been on the board for the full 2013-14 academic year. As to the other items we directed you attain in your first six months, this board is pleased with the progress you have made in all three areas. You have done extensive outreach to our community, our parents, our students, our teachers, our administrative staff, our community leaders, and many, many members of the Midland community and neighboring districts. Many people have commented on how they have appreciated your direct approach approach and and your what you see is what you get persona early in your tenure you established new vehicles of communication throughout the district to various constituencies you began a Monday communicate to staff parents and hundreds of community members you you started an our schools quarterly communication to the entire community in conjunction with the Midland Daily News you uh, do a Friday letter to the cabinet you have a teacher's committee creation and planned monthly meetings. You do a Friday letter to the board. You've started the shining star recognition of employees at board meetings. And you've continued the established monthly parent information committee meetings. You definitely have reached out to the employees, parents, and our community in a proactive fashion. Lastly, you've begun to set the course for successful renewal of our critical operating millages. You provided the leadership for the entire county in the pursuit of the renewal of the countywide enhancement millage such that it is now on the February ballot. This effort has included meetings with community leaders and you are currently organizing the campaign based on that input for successful renewal. This has already included strong endorsement for renewal from the Midland Area Chamber of Commerce. So Mike, in summary, we are very pleased to have you as part of our MPS family and feel you have gotten off to a strong start and certainly have performed at a very high level for your first six months on the goals we set for you at the start of your tenure in July of 2013. We look forward to similar strong performance for your first full academic year in the 2013-14 <coughs> school year. Signed, Jerry Wasserman, President of the Board of Education. Um, I'd open it up to a motion and we can have some discussion. Anybody care to move on accepting that performance review? <coughs> Moved by Lynn, support by support. Angela. I'll now open it to discussion and comment by board members. Go, go first, John. I can start. I just think about how far we've come. I, as a relatively newer board member, I was never involved with hiring a superintendent, and uh, um, really going through that process was was uh, very nerve-wracking and a lot of anxiety, both on your part, our part, trying to um, um, be able to select the next uh, leader for the school district. And it's really been a, it's been a great um, a path thus far. And I, I, can, I just think about from your perspective, trying to figure out everything to get get the feel for a, a different district size and all the different names and things like that. So it's uh, it's really great to have you uh, come along this far in the communication piece and that goes so far in a district and very, it's probably one of the hardest jobs to accomplish in a district is the communication trying to bring uh, innovative pieces as we go forward and I think that that's going to probably be probably one of your strengths is how do we innovate in the new environment. I think the writing's on the wall with what we have to go and change and, and uh, uh, change to. One thing that I I, uh, I, I, I love uh, what you've done here, and when we talked about uh, the letter and specifically what you see is what you get, I saw that more as you're an open book, a uh, very positive attribute, and that's appreciated. It's a open communication that is going to <coughs> help relations and help get things done here, and I'm excited to see everything you've done in such a short period of time. And excited for this next year uh, it was uh, <coughs> being a one of the newest board members uh, it was a, a neat experience going through the process to find you 
and as I'm sure you recall, I was your biggest critic uh, coming in here. <laughs> and uh, boy, did you prove me wrong. And man, I am glad to have you here, and I have every confidence in your ability to lead us into the future. Um, for that and all the reasons stated in this letter, um, thank you for being here with us. We really appreciate it. I certainly do. I do too. Yeah, I definitely like how you hit the ground running so fast. There mm -hmm. didn't seem to be a lag. I mean, you immediately started implementing things, and I really appreciated that. We could immediately sense that you were here, you were doing things. You didn't just sit back and spend a lot of time assessing before you actually started doing. So I really appreciate that. Chair, I'd like to make a comment on this right spot. Not yet. Okay. Oh, I, I, was, I was just <laughs> going to say, having gone, through this a, having gone through this a few times, and, and Jerry and I now <coughs> having done this a couple times, it's just been such a pleasure to have you here with us, Mike. And, and when we went to Algonac, I remember doing this with, the, with, with Carl, you feel guilty going down there because you're so respected and so well liked and you have those characteristics that we're looking for that you feel almost guilty taking, trying to take you away from someone, but boy, you've, you've done a marvelous job and, and those attributes that we, we were so excited about, we're, you're, you're already um, applying here and your leadership and, and as Pam says, an open book. You are what you said you are, and uh, I'm very glad you're here leading us on. I am too, and I hope you continue to be happy that you came here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm going to add one more that wasn't in the letter. Um, interesting enough, it was just Saturday evening. I bumped into a community leader in town, and uh, I, I, I thought it was an incredible comment. He came to me and said, don't let Midland change Mike too much. <laughs> and it got right with that comment of, I like what I see. Don't don't let Midland change Mike too much, and I thought, wow, that's 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 great. He's he's very happy and uh, pleased to have you on board. Well, I am I'm very happy to be here, and I, I'm still every day so impressed with the community and the school district as we go forward. And, and um, you know, as well as you're interviewing me last spring, I'm interviewing you, and it was a good board. You could see that to work for. And, and I have to tell you, since I've been here. It, if you if you are impressed with the smooth transition, it really is due to four people sitting to my left, and um, maybe first would be Cindy, who's walking out of the room right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, she's she is a tremendous at, asset to this district and a tremendous asset to me, and so um, just a, a great person and a great employee on top of it. And um, the, the, the other three have been wonderful to me. Um, I couldn't have a better group around me than than them, and all their knowledge and experience that they have with them is just been tremendous and been impressed with them and uh, we're going to do some good things for this district as we go forward. Although we, we really want to keep Linda longer but I don't think that's going to happen so. <laughs> yeah don't we have to do something like approve retirement? <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> how many years in advance yes. do we have to be done? Yes. I don't think we had enough notice. Um, that said we'll move into a vote in a minute but I just want to be <coughs> clarified. This would have been done in December. The letter is dated December. It was done in December. The vote would have been done December, but uh, yours truly blew it thinking there was a second December meeting, and there wasn't. But the good news is the board is constituted of the same people that would have been voting in December that would be voting in January. And that's why we do it on a January to December cycle now, to make sure the people that are on the board that experienced that year are the ones voting on the, on the performance for that year. So I just want to clarify that that's why we're doing it in January is because the president at the time, last year's president, wasn't on the ball to get it done on the <laughs> in the one meeting we had in December. I'll talk to him about that. <laughs> <laughs> that said, uh, I'd like to do a roll call vote on this. Um, so, uh, Mr. Secretary, whoop, oh, wrong. Guess who gets to do the first roll call? <laughs> you get to do your oh, first yes. roll call. Over here. Oh, I do. Yes. Okay. Um, do you need a list? Yes. Oh, I need to. I'm sorry. I need to go with the new. Well, that's okay. Um, Vice five. President Branstad. Yes. Secretary Gorton. That's me. Yes. Treasurer. Dr. Kaminsky. Yes. Gladly. Uh, member. Who's next? Member McFarland. Yes. I'm sorry. Member Baker. Yes. Member Singer. Yes. It's unanimous. Seven zero. Thank you, Mike, and I'm hoping uh, and very confident we'll be doing such a glowing thing again next December instead of January. 
And with that, uh, we'll now move the agenda back to 3.2 as we just moved to do a minute ago. And I'll hand it over to you, Mike. We have uh, two shining star employees this month. And uh, first is Karen Welser, if Karen would like to come up. And we have some wonderful things to say about you, Karen. So t bear with me as I try to, try to read, read through all these things, OK? Karen began her career with Midland Public Schools in 2006 as a substitute para paraprofessional. She quickly moved into a regular paraprofessional assignment, supervising students during the lunch hour at Plymouth Elementary School. In addition to her noon supervision responsibilities in 2007, Ms. Welser's regular paraprofessional assignment grew to include assisting special needs students in classrooms overload hours. An educator Ms. Ms. Welser worked with at Plymouth said, Karen has a lot of enthusiasm and loves working with the children. She has a great sense of humor, and the children respond well to that. For the, fa for the past few years, Ms. Welser's paraprofessional role has been a as a member of the Midland High School staff. While at Midland High, Karen is assistant in numerous areas such as band class, classroom overload, and Spanish one-to-one -one with students in the special service areas, and more. Karen was nominated for the Shining Star Award by an MPS parent. Among her comments, the parent wrote, We are so blessed to have Karen Welser as our daughter's parapro. Transitioning to high school has presented many new challenges for our daughter and our family. Karen has helped our daughter successfully make the adjustments to high school life. She pushes our daughter out of her comfort zone and inspires her to use her own voice and express her own opinions. She brings humor and laughter to our child's day and is helping her to not sweat the small stuff. As parents who have seen the struggles and the frustrations our daughter faces on a daily basis, we wouldn't want it any other way. Congratulations, Karen, on being named the January 2014 MPS Shining Star Employee. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We have another gift for you, and you get to shake everyone's hands at the oh. table. <laughs> Karen, thank you so much. Thank you. Second Shining Star employee is Paul Scroll. Paul, come up. And I, Paul is running right from the building, as you can tell, so he was very busy today. All right, and we have these wonderful things to say about you, Paul. Mr. Paul Scroll began his career with Midland Public Schools in July of 2000 as the department chair of the science at Midland High School. Before coming to MPS, Paul taught middle school and high school science in Finley, Ohio, and Adrian, Michigan. Paul earned his Bachelor's of Science degree from SVSU with a major in Biology and minor in Chemistry. He completed a Master's degree in Secondary Administration and Educational Leadership from Eastern Michigan University in 1995. In 2003, Mr. Schorl moved into Assistant Principal at H.H. Dow High School. In 2009, Paul assumed the Assistant Principal position at Jefferson Middle School where he continues his Midland Public Schools career today. Paul is a hard-working, dedicated educator. His first priority is what is good for kids. He has a consistently positive attitude, and his devotion to the needs of every student makes him a wonderful member of the Midland Public Schools family and a valued member of the administrative team. Paul completed the Gerstecker Fellowship Program in 2009. As part of this prestigious program, Mr. Scholl traveled to China and Japan to study school systems and cultures in the Far East. Paul was named, nominated for the Shining Star Award by an MPS colleague. The staff member wrote, Paul is a wonderful person and a real joy to work with each day. He cares about the parents, students, and staff. Paul has the respect of the parents, students, and staff. Students do not fear seeing Paul f for discipline issues. He cares deeply <laughs> about students, is fair, and holds them responsible for their behavior. He also follows up on their progress and maintains a relationship with them. He was always on the move and could see him everywhere. Paul has built a strong relationship with the students and staff. He is always present, serves to the best of his ability, and does it with an outstanding attitude. It is such a pleasure to work with a good man who has a high moral character and pleasing personality. Congratulations, Paul, on being our MPS Shining Star employee. Thanks, Thank you very much. Congratulations, Paul. Thank you. Don't run. No. I'm going to say something. Oh, yes. Uh, first okay. of all, Karen says thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Paul did a wonderful job with our daughter through the years, and she, she loves Paul. And secondly, thanks for what you did at Dow High years ago. You bet. Okay. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks, Karen and Paul, both, really. Thank you.
I'll turn it, we're going to finance, and I will turn it over to Linda. And in the words of the kindergartners, we have a gazillion gifts this evening. <laughs> <laughs> and I think they must total at least 10 gazillion dollars. <laughs> Uh, those that have already been received and processed and are for information only total $28,850.08. The first is from the Laura Ludington Hollenbeck Foundation for the Fitness Room at Midland High School. Uh, both high school athletic booster clubs have made donations to the athletic programs in their buildings. The Northeast Music Parents, that is a group known as Timpani, those of you who know your musical instruments will recognize that, and that is the Music Parents of Northeast. If you're trying to figure out what the acronym is. I've uh, made a donation to the program at Northeast. Midland County Youth Action Council at the Midland Area Community Foundation has provided a teacher mini grant to Chestnut Hill. The Jefferson Parent Advisory Committee has provided some support for Jefferson, uh, specifically the gym. The Michael and Victoria Briggs have given a donation to East Lawn, but it is actually for the Roger L. and Martha A. Briggs Elementary Education Gift for the Advancement of Science and Reading Education. And for those of you who have been around, you may recognize at least one of those names, Mart Briggs, longtime English teacher out at Dow High. She also was uh, ad advisor of the Key Club, and even post-retirement, we see her in this building about once a month because she is the advisor for the Action Club, which is sort of the, uh, an offshoot of Key Club. It's for uh, young adults with special needs, and if you're ever in here at the right time, they're all in here getting ready for their meeting. It's a tremendous amount of fun. Uh, so that gift is to support summer enrichment activities, specifically in science or reading at East Lawn. Uh, then the EGL Curry Foundation has provided money for Camp Outlook at Dow High School. And the Jefferson Music Parents Association, that would be the equivalent of uh, Northeast, although their letters don't make any kind of cute acronym that they've been able to come up with. <laughs> uh, they've provided some money, and I believe that's for the PA system in the gym. Uh, then we have gifts that total $777,605.96. Again, one of the donors is the Newman <coughs> High School Athletic Booster Club, providing support for the PA system at the community stadium. And I can't remember if we have processed a similar gift from Dow High or whether that one is yet to come, but both booster clubs were collaborating on that project. Uh, the Herbert H. and Grace A. Dow Foundation has provided two different gifts. The first is $570,000 for the IB primary years program, and that is one that we will budget very carefully and spend over the next few years, so you can expect to see that carry over into fund balance. Uh, the other is a donation to Looking Sharp, except it's coming directly to us rather than going to the Community Foundation, and that is $75,000 to support the upgrading of uniforms for the various music programs. Uh, then we have the Charles J. Strosacker Foundation all providing $120,000 also for the IB Primary Years Program. And then the Mary C. Curry Foundation supporting athletics at Midland High. And we are requesting your approval of those gifts. Wow. <coughs> Who'd that like the honor of uh, uh, motioning that? I move we accept the um, gazillion. balance, the gazillion gifts totaling, <laughs> I think it's because it's just the bottom part, yes. right? Totaling $777,605.96. That's just incredible. I will support that motion. Moved by Ms. Branstad and supported by Mr. <coughs> Barlin. Quest uh, questions. Questions? Qu yeah. Uh, questions or comments? Thank you. Yeah. It's mind boggling, really. I mean, it truly really is. We're so fortunate. Uh, I'm almost speechless. You know, we knew some of those were coming, but it, when it's put in a number right in front mm -hmm. of you like that, you just, mm -hmm. you're. It's overwhelming. Just, uh, Add the two together, it's over $800,000. Yep. yep. In one meeting that we're accepting, it's unbelievable. Yep. It, it, in the smaller gifts, you know, people just coming out and mm -hmm. taking care of needs. And I, I just love how the community, when I say community, I don't mean a large entity, I mean small pockets come to the 
come to the aid where the need is, and that's just great to see. Music parents, boosters. Oh, yeah, uh, it's touching everybody. everything. Music, touching athletics, everything. <laughs> elementary, high school, summer. Mm -hmm. Well, whoever votes no on this, we'll have a stern discussion out in the hallway <laughs> afterwards. But all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Thank you. <laughs> we'll move to uh, HR and Mr. Verlinde. Thank you. For information here, we have two um, um, memorials. The board and the staff extend their deepest sympathy. The family of Jean Gibbons Sharp who passed away on December 7th. She worked for Middle Public Schools for 22 years. She was a librarian at Northeast Intermediate School, retiring in 1979. And the board and the staff extend their deepest sympathy to the family of Wilfred L. Sweet, who passed away on December 9, 2013. Mr. Sweet was a business teacher with Midland Public Schools before becoming an administrator. He retired as an assistant superintendent of personnel in 1981 after 37 years with Midland Public Schools. And just as a side note, Mr. Sweet was the first one who I met with Midland Public Schools when I came here many, many years ago, and he actually hired me. Wow. So condolences to the families of both of those uh, individuals. And lastly, we have a staff member who has announced her retirement oh. effective as of June 30th, Bonnie Westervelt, principal at East Lawn Elementary. Of course, we thank her for her service and we'll have many opportunities to honor that service for these many years at Midland Public Schools. I'm obviously showing my age, but she's way too young to retire. <laughs> That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Thank you, Gary. Um, listed, you'll see the, the new, new meeting schedule we just approved tonight. That's much shorter than the past. And uh, so we'll go from there and a listing of correspondence to the Board of Education. So at this point, we'll move into study discussion session. And <coughs> uh, I'll begin at my left with Scott tonight. Um, what a roller coaster couple weeks it's been. Um, it is nice to have some center again in my life and get my feet back on the ground uh, and be back here <coughs> between going to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, back and forth to Vegas, to Chicago. My son was born on Christmas and my daughter had kidney surgery on Thursday and she's doing well. It has been great and quite frankly I'm glad it's over. Um, so that being said, congratulations to um, everybody who's gotten awards tonight and thank you so much for these wonderful books. I love my rendition and I will show it for those uh, who are watching at home. That's me. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. I don't know who drew it. I can't read the name. Somebody, Travis and it looks like maybe me, Micaiah possibly. Um, at any rate, um, this was really, it looks like quite a production and, and thank you so much for the time and effort put into this and for the book. I can't wait to get home and read it to my boys tonight. And it looks like it's going from my house directly to Siebert, where my son attends kindergarten. So, uh, yes, yes, right down the corner. Yep. So that's all I've got. Thank you very much. It is. Uh, it's great to be back. Wow. And I thank you all, too. I didn't realize mine says presented to Adams Elementary, which holds a special place in my heart, because not only did my children go there, but I went there. So that Wow. Um, yes, that is awesome. <coughs> Thank you very much. Love also mine. I won't show my picture. Oh, come on. All right. <laughs> Define it real quick. Now, people like Lynn and Yvonne have jewelry on. <laughs> I do not. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fabulous, and this is a great, great book. I cannot wait to get home and read through it again. Um, I want to congratulate Shining Stars, especially Paul Scholl, because he is in his... Um, I think that would be fifth year with my children, and so I have had to contact him, and he has been great to work with. And um, so, and I know he handles discipline. Little story: back when my son was in sixth grade, we were at church one Sunday, and he had just started Jefferson, and he goes, oh, "Is that Mr. Schroll?" And I said, hey, do you want to go say hi to him? Oh, no, he doesn't know me. He only knows two types of students. <laughs> and I said, well, maybe that's good then that he doesn't know you. Um, also, good luck to all the students. Finals, unbelievably, are coming up next week. And then the other thing that just always amazes me this time of the year is um, the students are starting to plan what classes they're going to take next year, which really just shows that this we never stop here. It's not, you know, right now planning's going on for next year and what classes everyone's going to take and what options there are and 
we were talking again last night at dinner with some of these other options. We always know the English and the science and all that stuff, but we just we have so many really interesting classes here that are offered and it's very hard to pick. We're like, do we want this or this? And I just think it's great that we um, can still offer some of these um, extra classes that really are gonna um, help make our students very well-rounded. And that's it. Okay. All right, well, I'm gonna start out with my picture here as uh, board secretary. Uh, so uh, I think I have my hair a little shorter than what's in the picture, but uh, really is a nice is picture. Is that a It is. <laughs> I'm preparing for the future. Yeah. And yellow hands, so this is really neat out uh, there. And then uh, my book is going to Woodcrest Elementary. So um, I don't know what grades will be reading this, but uh, having some elementary kids there, though, I get bragging rights that I have a dedicated book uh, in the library, which is really neat. Um, just some things here. We, we talked about uh, some of the, the gifts and the, the donors, and uh, I had the pleasure during the holidays, uh, or just before the holidays, uh, seeing the Jefferson uh, students sing at their choir and their musical. Well, it was announced there that the Dow High Choir that was performing after the middle school students, they had the uniforms that was the very first purchase uh, for the uh, Looking Sharp campaign. And so uh, there was also a very nice thank you in uh, the Midland Daily News written by uh, Kevin uh, Book, B-O-U-C-K, president of H.H. Dow High School Music Booster Club and Sharon uh, Kruger, president of Midland High School Music Parents Association, uh, thanking the H.H. Um, and Grace A. Dow Foundation, the Midland 100 Club, and the nearly 250 individual donors for support uh, supporting the Looking Sharp fundraising campaign. So it was really neat to see that, and that was a, a point of pride uh, that they brought up at the performance, which was really neat. Uh, nice article uh, with recognition for Judge Allen. I think about all that she's done uh, for the schools and for the community, and in particular the youth, and uh, improving the quality of life by preventing a lot of problems, preventing um, some of the, uh, of, of the difficulties, uh, reoffense and so forth with juveniles. Um, and saving a lot of money that goes along with that. And she was uh, recognized with the Lifetime Achievement Award. And in that, she gives a lot of recognition to a lot of the other community organizations that she teams up with, um, Department of Human Services, Community Mental Health, and so forth. And that was just a really nice article. And she has been a great champion for, um, for helping a lot of our kids that are in our school district. I thought that was very good. Um, legislative update from Mr. Charles. We're following the changes with the budget that's coming up. And I know at some point, um, once the governor gets the budget together, we're going to be contacting legislators because we do have a surplus in our uh, uh, the, the state's coffers. Uh, there's probably some debate. Are we using that towards roads or education? I think that uh, Midland Daily News had a, uh, an, a very nice editorial that talked about how, uh, how that uh, some of that surplus uh, or half of it in this particular case uh, is education is very deserving of that. So as that debate goes on, it'll be interesting to see where that goes. But I think that at some point, and, and as board members, we do get a fair amount of legislative updates. We do keep up on these things. We don't always bring it up at board meetings, but we do get things from Michigan Association of School Boards and so forth. But this could be a really pivotal year as far as um, our per, per, per pupil allowance and so forth. So uh, I think at some point we're going to probably be contacting legislators as the, I think the governor. Uh, gives his budget, legislators, they arm wrestle and they argue over it and away we go. So it would be interesting to see where that goes. As well as our millage um, um, uh, election item coming up. Um, some of the feedback that I've had talking to people in the community is that uh, they're very receptive to that as a renewal and I'm trying to educate people in the community about how flexible this particular fund is. We can use it for so many different things as, as we go forward and our needs change over time. So, on to Yvonne. Well, it's good to be back. It seems like we were away a while, so it's good to be back and get started on another year. I will show you my picture. I think it's great, too. <laughs> I thought yours you, was great, too. Yeah. You have all the jewelry like, and anyway. the makeup. Oops, I'm going the wrong way here. Um, I think it looks just like me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I recognize myself immediately. And I also noticed that Pam has a number of faces, so <laughs> I'm looking forward to meeting all of those. I think that's <laughs> all of you. Oh, maybe. Which is the real Pam. Yeah, okay, that could be. All my personalities. Are yeah, I, I thought that could be real interesting. <laughs> and I think the book is really a nice touch. Thank you so much. That's really, that's nice. I wish I could have an opportunity to read it also. Um, 
the gifts, of course, are really staggering. I mean, you can't even really think about that much money being given to the school system. I know there are so many districts that would just be thrilled to be able to have that kind of thing and really grateful for all of that. Um, I guess that's about all I have to say. Just welcome back, everybody, and I hope everybody has a good year. I hope the weather cooperates a little more for us moving forward. <laughs> My Ray? kids thought it was fine. <laughs> really? <laughs> that's, well, when they get we'll old, talk to them in June. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See what they think in June. <laughs> They're taking up extra days. Alrighty, I will. I will say thank you to. Um, to all of you for, for the book that will go to Chestnut Hill, which is very meaningful to me as well. I spent 19 years as a parent at Chestnut Hill, so um, longer than my kids did each one of them. So <laughs> I, we will enjoy that. It's very meaningful. And uh, to the, the students and the teachers, here is me. And my kids will laugh because I always have the curly poofs in my hair, and they got it right. So <laughs> You look a little concerned. I know, I know. <laughs> But uh, anyway, thank you. I, I love those. That, as somebody else said earlier, this is what, what it's all about. It's, it's the kids, and, and these are very special. We'll remember these things. Um, and to our shining stars, Karen Walser and Paul Schroll, um, I've known Karen for a number of years, and uh, you see Karen everywhere, and bless her heart, she's out there with that band on those cold, rainy, nasty days right there along with the kids. And, um, and, and uh, she's, she's a busy mom with her own children, so I applaud her for, for that. Uh, good luck on exams. I know that's a word that the kids don't like to hear, but I realize we won't see them until, or be back until after they're finished. And, and um, since I'm not in that schedule anymore, I kind of forget. But I know that can be kind of stressful, but we, you're, we, you're prepared well by our fantastic staff, so good luck on those. And then, since the talk has been weather and snow days, I, I would applaud Mike and all of, all of our administrative staff and our, st and our staff in general and those that had to make those, those decisions and get out there and plow. I mean, we're still chipping ice off our driveway and can't walk in the neighborhood. So I know that that was a lot of extra on uh, your shoulders as well. And the kids benefited from a couple extra days at home. It's just not the same, though, when you don't have kids at home going, it's a snow day. Um, and lastly, I guess I would say too, with the gifts, and you look at the variety of the gifts, and in my, in over the years now that I've, I've had the pleasure to, to be on, on the board here, the variety, but to see some of the dreams come true and, and how our community helps that happen uh, with now the IB primary years program. I, I go back far enough that when we were looking at doing the secondary program, it, that took some doing, and now this, and as our music program uh, raises money and athletics and all the way down, as we said, to field trips and, and some of the smaller uh, gifts for things in the classroom, it, we, we just wouldn't be the school district we are without all that support and help, so thank you for that. And I guess lastly, it is just continues to be a pleasure to be a part of the school board and, and work with all of you and, um, and all of you over Cindy, Linda, Gary, and, and Bob. And um, I look forward to this year with you as well, Mike. So, Dan? How's that? All right, yeah, since everyone's showing their pictures, <laughs> mine and my four unknowns, so I'm not. <laughs> I'll get back to you on who those are. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. Um, over the little break we had, I, I did a lot of thinking about our vision and our, our uh, mission, and I was thinking about creating, you know, our wanting to create a dynamic world-class education for our kids. And then you come here and you look at the $690,000 that the Grace A. Dow and the, or Herbert H. and Grace A. Dow and the Strohstacker Foundation has given us for that PYP program. And I think those kind of programs are what make us world class. And to have that kind of community support is just fabulous. And, um, and then you put on top of that the community support that in every, in, in athletics, in music, and it's heartwarming. And I'm excited for this millage because I think it, it's, it's looking like our parents are supporting us and where we need to go. So um, with that kind of support, I'm excited about what's what's happening here in the schools. 
Um, a big shout out to Dow High. This week, the symphony band is going to Grand Rapids, and they're very excited about a special honor in that um, in that musical presentation there. Also, a uh, shout out to Mike on your YouTube, your Twitter, your uh, text. You have become such a popular guy <laughs> for our students. <laughs> and uh, th you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of kids who, who are following you and um, really like your snow days especially, but <laughs> it's, it's great to have new communication avenues that we're excited about following, so thank you for that. And it was exciting to read about the Gettysburg trip for the Viking leadership team. What an opportunity. I've got a fifth grader at Plymouth and going over to Northeast next year, and it'd be great to be able to participate in some programs um, like that. What an opportunity. So very excited that um, we can provide, um, our schools can provide uh, opportunities like that. Great things are happening. Good luck to you students for finals. Study hard. And that's all I have. Oh, I got a few things uh, in regards to Board Appreciation Week or month. <coughs> Thank you all. Okay, you've made my life uh, very easy in the last year. Could have been a lot more difficult. Thank you very, very much. I've uh, enjoyed working and continue working with all of you. Uh, you, you we, our, all our hearts are in the right place, and I, that really makes serving on this board fun. So thank you uh, to Karen and Paul. Uh, you're my shout out to Paul as he's coming through. Um, I think they're just so indicative of much of our staff and thank them and all of our other staff that yet to be recognized that someday will be because of what they do for our kids and to the donors. Um, uh, what a vote of confidence by people to, to, like I said earlier, just rise up and take care of issues as they come along. Uh, it's, it's great. Um, on a positive note, I'd like to shout out to some folks that Mike's probably going to touch this and maybe it's premature that have volunteered to help us with our campaign. Uh, various community members from a whole cross-section of folks, and I won't go through that a lot, but uh, in spirit of uh, an extension of us, thank them today also. And uh, Pam, to your point with Mike, Mike, uh, you know, you're, you're just like a baseball player. You're the baseball player you are. You know, when you get that hit, you're a hero. Next time you come up, you strike out, you're a bum. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to feel that all over again last week. Yep. You're a hero when you were calling them off and the day you didn't call them off, you were the worst pitcher ever again. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think uh, maybe you had a deja vu moment with your baseball days again. Yep. And uh, <laughs> lastly, the book. Um, I always point out their pictures. I point out my picture in the one, and I love it because I do wear this one blue tie a lot, and, and I do have to go change my wardrobe because I didn't recognize I need blue shoes that match it So <laughs> with my black suit, so we're going to have to go find that. Uh, but in a more serious note, th this book that's going to go out to East Lawn, um, you know, uh, I don't want to denigrate it. I got a room full of plaques for the last decade of serving as you go through this. This one means more than all those plaques. This will sit in a kid's hand, many kids' hands, hopefully for several years before it falls apart and, and gets torn up. But uh, that means a lot that someone's going to be reading a book instead of me looking at a plaque. So thank you for the great idea and for the recognition. And with that, I'll turn it over to Mike. Snow days it is. We have, we have, uh, <laughs> we have used our six that you are forgiven for. and. Um, we will have to make any up going forward. We have to plan accordingly that way. I have written our legislators in the hope of them forgiving the two wind-powered days that we were down, which was unusual, and we'd have two, two left to hopefully make it through this winter. Um, the more districts that reach that six, probably the better hopes they are that the uh, legislators will work with you. If you recall last year, year they had, we had a pretty good winter as well. Several districts got there. Um, you did have to make up time the end of the day had to show them how they were going to do that but they didn't add you have you add days but they did not rule on that and give you that ruling until may and so in that case we have to plan accordingly anyway we've looked ahead at our calendar um, there could be some work possibly done on the march pd day um, to make up dates or i think we're scheduled to release on a wednesday tuesday or wednesday 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 and we could make up um, possibly a couple days on that Thursday, Friday, which will be super popular, but since it's in the same week, I think it works versus coming back next week as well. well 
off the Twitter, and I think I shared with some of you, um, the students, uh, I, I've had some humor with, as well with them. It was interesting, I had 150 followers when I was tweeting educational issues. When I started tweeting snow issues, I think I got 395 followers. <laughs> <laughs> and a good majority of them are students, and they, and, they, and they know when they get that right away. And you know, the, it was, they were tweeting out Superintendent of the Year one day, and then the next day it was, Mr. Cheryl, what kind of car do you drive to check these roads? <laughs> um, so, I, so I found that, I had some joy with them. I wish I could send out to him right now. I don't really know how to do it. I did tweet it out, I guess. Um, someone else I have to give him credit for, and I sent it to you, is the end of snow days. If you had a chance to look at your email, uh, yeah, it. take a look. At it. But it's, it's a four-wheel drive um, raised school bus. So you some press here too, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There you go, how to predict the snow days. So uh, it has been an unusual year with, uh, with all of the different weather that we've had going on, but we will get through that as well. My concern, though, I have to tell you, is always loss of learning time. And so, you know, think about it. We've lost a little over a week of yeah. learning time at this point. Could lose up to, to more going forward. And so I've also pushed our legislators to think about that all snow days should be made up. And maybe then we build calendars with makeup days like some states do. And if you don't use them, then those days go away and you don't have to go through them. And so um, loss of learning does matter. There is data to show that. Maybe one or two days it doesn't. But when you lose a week or eight days, there is loss of learning out there going on. Um, the enhancement millage, we have uh, formed the committee per the conversation we had with several of our business leaders. Um, I think we had a good start off to the meeting. Um, um, Jerry was there. Um, looks like we secured some funds through this committee um, to do some work as well. And um, we also met last week with the Midland Daily News editors. And um, I, th I think that was a very good conversation we've had. And um, had, had a little bit of nice press from them as well to help um, go forward with the enhancement mode. So I think we're moving on the right way. We definitely need to identify our supporters and make sure they remember to vote on February 25th. That's all I have. That's it. With that, anything else for the good of the order? And we'll just sit here for 10 more minutes, quietly reflecting. <laughs> no. <laughs> With that, uh, we will stand adjourned. Mm -hmm. yeah.